Hey guys, just a short video. Um, tomorrow is an, uh, another bite ball um, distribution. So, um, is it worth to participate? Um, uh, well, it's a lot less uh, that's being distributed than the first time, uh, but uh, I do think it's it's worth to do it. Um, it's only about ten percent. Uh, of the amount that was distributed the first time will be distributed now, so 10 times less uh, to uh, people that uh, um, I registered Bitcoin. Eh? So the more Bitcoin you register or show that you have, eh? the more you will get a uh, bite ball, but it's going to be like 10 times less. Um, but okay, uh, I think... Tony will likely change his mind in the future and raises again in next distributions because likely not that many Bitcoins will participate this time because it's not that interesting as the first distribution. So I don't think he will attract many new Bitcoins to the uh, snapshot. And so the, the first snapshot was about 70,000 Bitcoins that registered. So I'm thinking right now will be around 100,000 or so and um, a little bit more, but not much more. And so um, uh, that's why um, only about 10% uh, more Bible will uh, come into circulation. Mm. Of course, if 1 million Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoins registered, then it would be a lot more than it would be like 100%, 100% so a doubling of the Bible in circulation, but that won't happen, I think. Um, so, uh, and of course, if you already have Biteball, you can register them too. You don't have to do anything. Uh, you will get also a 0 0.1 uh, gigabyte for each gigabyte that you have. But if you register them also, uh, you will also get black bytes. Um, uh, so, um, So, so that's the first news item. Uh, the second news item is that um, I went to a Bitcoin meeting yesterday. It was interesting to see that um, a lot of people were busy with Biteball and had uh, seemed to ha have received some on the first distribution. And, and I, I really liked that because I really hate it when I have to push my own coins. I rather see just coins being adopted and me being part of it as an investor um, and, and with NXT. I really had to push a lot myself and, 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 and that was difficult. Uh, it's great to see with Biteball that, um, well, the way he has distributed this seems to reach people. So so that's good. And it's also interesting that uh, on this meetup, nobody had been selling their Biteballs, even though everybody got them for free. And even though everybody's sitting on nice gains because they have gone up quite a lot already in one month time. So um, that's interesting to see that people don't sell it. I also haven't sold it, but I do know some people that have sold a little, 10-20%. Mm, but but I'm, not, I'm not so sure in the long term this is going to be proven to be a great distribution strategy because, um, well, when people invest in something and they are sitting on a loss, they don't want to sell. But if they are sitting on a profit, they, are, they sell much easier. And so basically Biteball may go down to zero and still everybody is sitting on a profit. So the, 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 the amount of sellers will not be exhausted quickly um, that feel bad about selling because nobody invested anything, any hard cash. In contrast to, for example, Monero um, or Bitcoin um, or NXT, uh, almost all coins um, actually... Uh, no, Bitcoin, Monero, uh, there, you know, everybody paid hard cash for their coins. So the moment it goes down too much, people don't want to sell anymore. But that has been a problem with NXT. NXT was actually not distributed for free, but, but you could only invest one Bitcoin, up to one Bitcoin. So the people that invested in it, um, invested only one Bitcoin and then it went up a lot of value and uh, and so one Bitcoin became worth 100 Bitcoin and even 1000 Bitcoin if you just hold on to them. And so these people were sitting on huge gains and, and hence why they could sell for a very long time down to very low prices 
and still don't feel bad about it. Um, that and also some early adopters or even founders of NXT leaving has caused the price to be under great, uh, great um, uh, stress. Uh, so, but today uh, NXT uh, has gone back up because it started basically at, 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 at one Satoshi worthless, but it went up to 100 Satoshi the first few days. And then it went up to 1,000 Satoshi the first month. And then it went up to 10,000 Satoshi the second month. Uh, and then it hit 10,000 Satoshi a few times in 2014. But then it basically went down to 1,000 Satoshi again. And, uh, and that was a very painful ride because most people that uh, bought it, uh, not the initial um, ICO investors, but later on, like me, I bought around 5,000 Satoshi or so, and then seeing it go down to 1,000 Satoshi is very painful. You lose a lot of your Bitcoins that you invested. But right now, since then, NXT has uh, uh, launched Ardor and all NXT holders got Ardor. And, and, and so the price of those both together is now around 2,500 Satoshi. So it's still up a lot uh, for the ICO investors, but it is, um, it is, well, for the those that came after, it's actually not that bad, but of course it's very difficult not to make any mistakes. For me, it's still pretty bad because I actually sold uh, on, on 1,800 Satoshi or so, no, or 1,500 Satoshi, I sold a big piece of my investment. So at a big loss, I, I sold a big piece and, and I, I locked in that loss. Uh, and so I can't make that back again, even if NXT goes up a lot. Eh? So, so, so that's of course my own fault. But um, we'll have to see um, how this project goes. I like very much that they are working with Ardor on, on the real problem in cryptocurrency, the script, uh, scalability. So, and, and they might have indeed um, a good solution for that. Uh, some others are also working on that. I hear uh, IO coin. I haven't studied it. I heard about that yesterday, uh, as well as um, uh, what's their name again? Uh, forgot it. But um, what's interesting about the, the 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 scalability solution of Ardor is that it is a decentralized solution. Huh? Um, because Bytebal, for example is also very scalable, but it is quite centralized. It uses 12 witnesses, um, 12 witnesses that uh, in the end, uh, I, I guess, uh, are the final authority, whether a, a transaction is valid or not. And and even these 12 witnesses are now controlled by the founder, Tony. So that that's not even 12 people, it's just one. So it's extremely centralized currently, not only the development, but also the validation of transactions. And so that's why a coin like uh, Byteball um, uh, may have a very high, hard time to be adopted by uh, Apollonix um, because uh, a 51% attack um, is, uh, is easy to do by the founder. Um, oh, I heard that yesterday was a very good uh, criticism uh, on Byteball, um, definitely worth mentioning. Mm. But yeah, it's interesting to see that um, Byteball as well as IOTA uh, don't have any uh, quotations on any cryptocurrency markets, a uh, famous one, Bittrex, Polonix or others. But uh, Byteball is traded on a very small new uh, Polish exchange, Cryptox.pl. But yeah, with NXT it was also like that at the start, it was on... On DHEX, a very small exchange, and only later it was adopted by others. So, so this is all still possible, of course. And I do think myself that cryptocurrencies will become more centralized, not only in development, they are very centralized, still are, will likely continue to be. But in um, validation of transaction and security, uh, it is quite centralized. Also Bitcoin with only a few miners uh, making up 51% of the hashing power. But... Other coins, in that sense, actually, proof of stake, uh, NXT uh, is, is much more decentralized in, in securing of transactions, um, validating, uh, validating of transa transactions and securing the network. 
um, that's, 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 that's more decentralized there. But uh, as you can see, uh, newcomers like Byteball um, basically don't use that and, and use something else uh, that actually is also more centralized validation of transactions. I personally don't see a big problem of that because, um, well, cryptocurrencies uh, need only be decentralized for one reason, and that's that governments um, uh, had outlawed um, pe from people to, to launch currencies. You couldn't compete with fiat currencies like the euro, US dollar. You would be like... Um, imprisoned if you would do that uh, at the time so 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 that's why bitcoin started as a decentralized currency because there was no chance if it would start on a centralized server it would have survived uh, it would have been taken down quickly by um, by the government and so um, and thanks to it have, having been started decentralized uh, governments decided actually not to attack it and, and allow it uh, to happen and so that's where we are today but now that they have allowed it to happen it m might become a real business uh, where, where, where we get a lot of currencies we already already have that a lot of cryptos uh, but the cryptos that will be competitive might throw overboard the, all these decentralization ideology that doesn't really serve a purpose anymore um, and, and, and thanks to throwing this overboard, may become much faster, uh, cheaper um, to, to send uh, transactions and, um, and more user friendly. Huh? Because that's of course a big drag uh, on development if you need to develop things in a decentralized way. Huh? So, so, so we'll see how this goes. But of course, you have much more security if, 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 if a coin is decentralized because money is very important. You sometimes want to put a lot of value into that and so uh, it's very important that it's secure that it's not easy to be taken down um, but what i really miss in the bitcoin world is the realization that bitcoin is very easy to take down it's like i never hear that say by people or very rarely and this has been the case for a long time I've been saying this for three years now, but if a government really wants to take down Bitcoin, they only have to put in like 100 million and they, and, and they can do a successful 51% attack. This is play money. So, so, so for, for, for central banks, they can print this, this with one mouse click. They can easily do this. And that's why I think Bitcoin is all the, the whole decentralization ideology, even though it's it's really like it's just not there it's not there um, at the start it did uh, it was much more decentralized than, than later on um, so, so at the start everybody could start their own computer and, and, and validate transactions and so um, yeah, you had a lot of computers For, compared to the value of the total value of Bitcoin. You had a lot of computers validating transactions. So, yeah, it was really not worth taking that down for government. It was not very valuable and just a very small, very nerdy niche market. And, um, and it was quite decentralized. Also, the developers were anonymous. So it's all a lot of work and it wasn't worth it to take it down. But things have changed a lot uh, today. Um, well, these developers are not anonymous anymore. Um, and well, the validation of transactions is not very decentralized. You can't do it with a computer anymore. So it's, it's, it are big farms now and, and a few of them. But OK, they are in China. OK. Um, <clears throat> but still, like that's easy peasy for the Chinese government to to take that down but even for for a western government they can easily compete with these chinese miners if they want if they can blow money burn money then they can easily get 51 percent of the mining power in the west uh, in some one one location and, and do a 51 percent attack or just um block um block 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 and, and successfully block transactions for a week or a couple of weeks and just take down the network 
So this can happen. But it's surprising how things have uh, panned out because these things I was saying three years ago, but what has happened in the meantime, I would not have imagined that actually it's not the government that is actually sabotaging Bitcoin. No, it's the core developers. It's the developers themselves that are sabotaging Bitcoin, allowing, like not scaling it up, uh, the block size, and due to that, transaction fees have exploded and are now like 20, 30 cents. That was also a big team yesterday on the Bitcoin meetup. Of course, I brought it up myself, but the way people responded was, yeah, they really don't like it that they have to wait now eight hours, sometimes two days to see a transaction validated that has paid a decent fee. Yeah. Some people are not aware that actually if it's not validated in three days, it's bounced and you can do it all over again. This is a real big problem today <laughs> in the Bitcoin community and it's just pure due to decisions the core devs made. So that's why I feel very confident that not to have much or any very, very little 1% of my portfolio only invest in Bitcoin today. Uh, but uh, do, uh, the reactions on my video were interesting. Many people think I'm making a very big mistake by not investing in Bitcoin anymore and only in altcoins. Um, so, so that's very interesting to see. Um, and especially altcoin traders, eh? many of them, uh, they actually value Bitcoin much higher than altcoin and often altcoins and often have 50% or more in Bitcoin. Even though they are busy with altcoins every day, uh, they have the majority of their, uh, their assets in Bitcoin. Um, but uh, what, what really gives me strength in my uh, convictions here, because I'm not an engineer, I don't, if people start on talking on a technical level, I have to admit I don't understand it. Eh? So, uh, but just seeing the kind of people that also uh, 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 share these ideas, uh, of course, uh, in a, uh, well, they are not the least. It's, called, it's Gavin Andres, and he was the lead developer of Bitcoin that made it into a big success after Satoshi. Uh, Mike Hearn, who has um, actually, if you read his article, when he, they call it rage quit. But um, that's not a rage quit when you actually write a very long article about what's wrong with Bitcoin and why you stop the development, uh, developing it. Um, that's not a rage quit. Uh, I really suggest you read that article. Uh, because it's very good. I will link it below. Um, and and these, uh, uh, but even people in that that yeah, these are the engineers. But then the people that really have pushed Bitcoin into a big success is Roger Ver, by far the leading person. Um, but there are some others too. Um, uh, Olivier Janssens, um, and I'm not sure. Uh, Actually, but what these people I really admire and, and, and they share the same opinion. Of course, there are some other people that I also admire, uh, but, uh, but, but have not, uh, don't see it this way at all. Eh? Like Trace Meyer, for example, he really thinks Bitcoin is doing very well uh, with the, the, and the court of decisions are the right ones. Yeah, I'm sorry, I, I, I don't agree. Uh, but I have also noticed Trace Meyer is very, very, very... Um, intolerant uh, towards altcoins and this even if Bitcoin would do things very well and, and the core devs would, would make great decisions and do great development then still uh, I think it's not nice uh, to be very dismissive about all altcoins it's just very uh, one-sided um, because competition is a very good thing for any market and okay, you may be invest in only one company, but why be an ass towards the others? That's really not necessary. Um, and, and, and so I've noticed Trace Meyer doing this. I also noticed that many, many actually Bitcoin tarts, uh, as I like to call them uh, at the time, uh, people that were really convinced that Bitcoin was the one and only and, and could not be, uh, never uh, another could win due to its network effect, uh, the strong network effect of Bitcoin. Many of them actually have also started to really um, well disagree with uh, what core devs have decided and, uh, and, and actually are supporting now Bitcoin Unlimited. So. There is a very big problem going on and I really think we will get a fork uh, this year, 2017, and we will get two Bitcoin versions. 
Um, and so I really hope I have Bitcoin actually before that happens because I do think that Bitcoin will not go down in overall value if that happens. Uh, I think Ethereum has shown what uh, happens then. It's that uh, the value gets split over the two coins, but the total value is still the same. And since you will have Bitcoin in both chains, you won't have lost any value. But after that, I think the value of Bitcoin Unlimited will go up a lot. Um, because that's really uh, what needs to be done, is to allow Bitcoin to scale on chain. <laughs> on the chain, of course, not of the chain. Um, so, uh, but I really hope, of course, that Ardor uh, enjoys also uh, from these pericles and, uh, and, and because it really has developed a great scaling solution. But the big challenge for Ardor will be to have actually real users, eh? because if you don't expect your existing users, well, they go away and they don't come back and Bitcoin is doing that very well today also. Eh? kicking away existing users, um, that's really extremely, um, you can only do that if you have, like, if you are reaching for more or more valuable or more users in the, and you have to get rid of certain kind of users, okay, but um, if you don't replace them, Bitcoin, of course, has a big look that Many people that support uh, the, 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 the core devs, they, they see Bitcoin as a digital gold and they think Bitcoin will have a great future as just digital gold and it has no future as a payment system to pay for coffee. And, and that's true, of course, that's certainly possible. Bitcoin has the big luck to be the uh, first uh, in the market and, and be the leader and still has tremendous um, mind share. And so indeed, even when they fuck up uh, and lose a big market, uh, they can still become much more valuable just for this as, as, as a store of value token eh, to, to exchange large amounts uh, worldwide with each other. Um, uh, Bitcoin still offers great value. It doesn't matter if a transaction then costs one euro or five euro. Or, eh, well, it's soon going to be over a dollar eh, uh, at this rate. Uh, but it doesn't matter for large uh, transactions, it can cost $5, $50, $100, that's okay for large amounts. So that's where we're heading to uh, in the current situation. Um, but yeah, uh, Bitcoin is not, currently the Bitcoin price is not showing a lot of strength. Um, it's again failed to breach its all-time high now. It went uh, two times now, $2,000, I corrected again. And um, um, yeah, this is in line with my, my other research that the that, 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 that Bitcoin bubble won't, ge won't go as high. Uh, well, what that means is that I, I expect it only to go to two, three thousand. But yeah, that means that, yeah, it may take some time uh, for this to happen also, uh, as it seems to be the case. And in the meantime, we're sitting all very good uh, in altcoins, I think. Uh, the only uh, altcoins uh, are the worst place to invest in at the height of the Bitcoin bubble. Um, and so uh, when Bitcoin is at two, three thousand, you don't want to be in altcoins anymore because it will correct strongly and altcoins will correct a lot more. But um, and actually altcoins are also normally not a good place to be right before Bitcoin goes uh, to its all time high uh, at $1,200. But this has changed the past year. Altcoins have actually been a good place to be uh, when Bitcoin has gone from $200, it's low to now $1,000. Um, altcoins were actually not that bad. Some were not good, actually, half of them. The ones that didn't do any in innovations, Dogecoin, Litecoin, Namecoin, Peercoin, they are still like still crashing versus Bitcoin today. So these, but these, even these will likely go up a lot once Bitcoin breaches its all time high. But many new coins have done actually uh, very well versus Bitcoin have gone up. Um, so, 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 and that's quite new actually. Um, that was not the case in the previous bubbles. What else can we discuss? That's it. I hope you enjoyed the short video, guys. Have a great day. Bye.